Dune Spice Wars is finally out and I want to give a big thank you to Funcom and Shura Games for sponsoring this video because it allows me to show you the Dune universe. We're going to be talking a lot about the lore and we're going to be role playing as House Atreides today. You can also use the link below to get the game for yourself and join the Dune universe. There's four factions that you can choose to play as the Fremen, the Smugglers, House Harkonnen, as well as House Atreides and because we want to be the good guys guys in this story will be going for House Atreides. Each faction has unique bonuses and for the Atreides we can do peaceful annexation of sieges which are territories that you can control. As well as other factions do not lose authority from treaties with you and you get more benefits from having a high standing with the Landsrat. We can choose two of the four counselors and I am going to go for Duncan Idaho and Gurney Halleck, two of my favorite characters from the Dune universe. We start the game having control over Arakin and we're gonna recruit a second ornithopter to help us scout the areas around us. We're also gonna be sending this ornithopter to discover the spice melange right next to us so we can start harvesting it. We recruited our first two units so we're gonna start moving them towards the first siege that is being discovered right now by the ornithopter. Be extremely careful when moving over deserts for a long period because that is when the sandworms are gonna start making their appearance. You want to make your way towards the areas where there's some stone on the ground otherwise your units are going to be lost forever in the belly of a big worm let's attack darnit and let's destroy their units here first it's great to have a combination of uh, melee troopers and the ranged you also can assign auto recon for your ornithopters and then they're just going to be scouting around without you having to take care of them every five seconds that's personally one of my favorite things about the game. It can be super automated and still extremely enjoyable at the same time. Now that we killed the garrison defending this siege, we're going to be taking control over it. We have control over the siege of Dalnit, so we can build our first refinery, attach it right next to the village. And we also can recruit a couple of militia units to protect the village in case it does get attacked by anybody. We'll be bringing our boys back to Arakin since we'll be taking this other village next, since it has a lot of plastic bonuses and we need plastine in order to build our buildings as well as to maintain them. We've also unlocked our developments which essentially are researches that improve our faction considerably. We've got four areas one that deals with intelligence, one that deals with your overall interaction with the natives, as well as, as you can imagine, your military and your construction parts here. I like to do local dialect studies first, and then I can just queue intelligence networks, composite materials, and survival training as I go along. You can access your researches from this particular button. To give a little bit of an insight in the Dune universe, the game itself starts in the year 10191 AG, which in our years would be the year 23,191 AD. Why is it called AG, you ask? Well, that's because in the Dune universe, time is counted not from the birth of Christ, but from the moment that the Spacing Guild was created after the Butlerian Wars, which essentially saw the end of using artificial intelligence in the Dune universe. What just happened? Somebody just... Oh, okay. Arakin is shooting down into the siege here. <laughs> nice. I like to get a little bit of help from Arakin when possible, of course. And it's really important to remember the fact that they do not use artificial intelligence in the Dune universe because that is the reason why spice is such an important commodity in this world. Spice is actually used to augment humans and to create the people that can actually drive the big spaceships from one place to another in space essentially they use spice to alter their dna and to make them insanely smart there's actually a lot of uses for spice the Benny Gesserit use them and a lot of other factions in the uh, dune universe use spice without spice though nobody would be able to travel between planets in the dune universe with the exception of the ixians which still use artificial intelligence but it is a unique case with special permission let's say we're gonna be building a wind trap in the uh, siege of Ashland because we're gonna need some more water. You need water for basically everything in this game. Water on Dune is extremely scarce and it's basically worth more than gold. Let's get again one militia and one ranged militia in Ashland and once we have 200 Solaris we're also gonna be 
getting another ranged unit. We can also deploy the harvester and we're gonna enable auto recall, which means whenever a sandworm is detected, we're gonna automatically get the uh, harvester picked up by the planes and brought back. Otherwise, the sandworm's gonna eat the crew and we don't want the crew to be eaten by a sandworm, do we? There's a few reasons why we need spice in the game. First off, we gotta pay our imperial tax and this progressively gets bigger and bigger so we need to increase the output of spice as we go along in the game and second off we can also sell spice to get solaris which is the currency in the game and it's great to check and manipulate the market sell the spice whenever it's really expensive and keep it when it's very cheap of course we've also gotten our first agent now we can use our agent for seven different things here we can assign it to infiltrate one of the three other factions we can also assign it to infiltrate arrakis the spacing guild chum or the lands rat and depending on wherever we assign these agents they're gonna give us different bonuses at the start i like to assign it for chum so we get a few extra solaris but then you can change them around whenever you need to i really like the little details in the game like look at this you have spice ships actually going between arakin and the refinery here aside from the buildings that you can actually build in each of the siege you also get a special bonus that is unique to each siege like one intel production from this siege in Dalnit. Hadpo gives me minus 20 building construction costs. You can also get manpower production and so on depending on the siege. So whenever you expand, considering expansion can be a little bit slow at the start, try to go for the siege that better benefit you. We got a raid detected as well. Looks like uh, we're gonna get attacked in the uh, siege of Ashland. Your units also have a certain amount of supply. So whenever you send them over desert tiles that are very long before they reach a village try to upgrade your technology get survival training and other technologies to increase the amount of supply that the units have for example if i was to send them over to valsud it's very likely that they're not going to make it because they have to get the supply to go there and do the battle and they'll likely run out by the middle of that trip so I'm pulling them yes, back sir. here and I'm going to be sending them again after I get survival training. We've been a good boy and we paid the Imperial Spice Tax. The origin of Spice itself is it was discovered by the Imperial Chemist. I kid you not, his name is Yanshup Ashkoko, and that was in the year 1400 BG, which is before the creation of the Spacing Guild. So that's basically 12,000 years roughly before the events of this game. But Spice was on Arrakis from before that. It was actually introduced to Arrakis when the Sand Trouts were brought over in the year 5000 BG, which is 15,000 years before the events of what's happening now and when the sand trout was brought to arrakis arrakis was a water paradise lush with vegetation and it became a desert because the sand trout was basically sucking all the water from the uh, planet and turning it into a desert whilst the sand trout morphed into the sandworm that we have in the dune universe oh we got a new spice field detected boys that means we're gonna have to rush for this place here it also offers 20 percent experience Experience gain for all my military units it's gonna cost a lot if i want to peacefully annex this so i'm just gonna go ahead and i'm gonna use my army to annex that one the lands rat is in session and we have three resolutions that we can vote on each with their benefits or debuffs so we can choose which house is gonna get the benefits or the debuffs <laughs> obviously these are benefits here so we're gonna assign our own house and we're gonna assign a little bit of influence you get a certain amount of influence based on a few things such as how charismatic charismatic you are let's say and you can use this influence when voting in the lands rat oh boy look at that that's the sand moving because there's a massive sandworm over there trying to eat our harvester okay we managed to get him out in time and one of our agent has navigated these ruins which offered us a small bonus take note in order to do so you just got to go to your espionage and make sure one agent is assigned to arrakis but after he's done with his job there, you can assign him to whatever else afterwards. Oh no, looks like my troops are being chased by a sandworm. Let's, Let's make it to the rocks. Hurry up, boy.
boys, hurry up. Oh, no, this is not good at all. Please don't eat me, Sandworm. I love you. Okay, we made it. We made it, boys. Now it's time to kill these guys because we need to get supplies or our troops are going to starve out. Wow, I just lost all of my units trying to take this place. I killed their units and then my supply ran out. So um, I'm peacefully annexing this on the bright side, but I got to build a new army now. So I'm a little bit behind compared to the other houses, militarily speaking, at least. And we also lost in the lands rat. Looks like Harkonnen got the bonus to charm spice production and smugglers got the authority. We should have just focused everything on one of the results yeah. instead of being greedy and trying to get everything. Time to also build a research hub, which is going to increase the amount of research we get and another spice field has been detected in the northern parts this time at least now we can start recruiting heavy weapon squadrons which are way better than most of the other squadrons and it's great to mix these guys up so we're gonna have a couple of melee troops as well as a couple supporting range troops to work together the spice wars in the dune universe and in our game begin when the house harkonnen which ruled over arrakis for a very long time was out Hosted, and the fiefdom of Arrakis was given to House Atreides. I say fiefdom because in the Dune universe, the Empire is essentially a feudal society with the Emperor giving out certain planets as fiefdoms to certain lords of the various houses. Now, the reason the Emperor gave this uh, fiefdom to House Atreides is because House Atreides was gaining a lot of power in the Landsrat, which is essentially Awaiting like command. a sort of a parliament. So because the Emperor's own house was losing strength and House Atreides was getting bigger and bigger, they could not directly attack House Atreides because then all the other factions would rally against the Emperor. So what they did was a five-head move. They gave House Harkonnen's prized possession to House Atreides because they knew that House Harkonnen is going to attack House Atreides to take back Arrakis. Because in the Dune universe, whoever owns Arrakis controls most of the spice production of the world and as such controls who gets to fly, who doesn't get to fly, which is why House Harkonnen is the richest out of all the houses. Boom, we paid another tax. Oh no, it looks like the smugglers are trying to get our siege here, which is one of the best ones since we have spice. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a problem. I'm gonna have to defend this, but my troops are all engaged over here, so I'm really, really stretched thin right now, and they're taking advantage. Oh yeah, we just got three Imperial Landsrat guards, so we can use these guys to take back our siege from the smugglers because they're about to capture this. We've built an airport in Tad Al Ghod, which means that we can transfer troops now from this circled area via air to other circled areas. Essentially, these are the airport zones and we have another one in our capital. We're going to build one more in the south after we've taken Aisan. And right now we're taking advantage of the fact that we have three land red guards, which will disappear in a few days. So before they disappear, we're going to use them to do a few attacks against against the uh, Fremen and House Harkonnen, both of which are ridiculously strong, whilst the uh, smugglers are actually struggling to survive here, having been multiple times attacked by both the Fremen and House Harkonnen. Time to vote once more in the lands, right? And this time we're gonna invest everything in getting the extra spice exchange rate bonus. That will really help us out and it will ensure that we can recruit more units to fight against the other factions. We also finished building the research center that offers extra knowledge and knowledge percentage as well as lowers the maintenance cost of research hubs which is a massive bonus onto itself since those things can be super expensive. Time to also get a recruitment center done now since we are struggling with manpower more than anything else at this point. I like the combat animation actually. Oh, gotta pull back out of there. Them sandworms are not on my side, that's for sure. I like how also the uh, missile battery here is firing at the enemy raiders, which does help quite a little bit by the way especially on the outskirts i'm gonna make sure that i have at least one missile battery in all of my sieges and it looks like the fremen reached 10,000 hegemony which is really not good for us and yes the fremen are the strongest right now so i'm gonna have to focus on attacking the fremen more than the harkonnen let's shuttle our army from the north into the uh, capital place here so we can start attacking
attacking with these troops into the south after pretty epic animation once more and we got friendly relations with the siege in uba which means we're actually getting two authority from them right now and we managed to get a support drone which is going to be of massive help to the army since it basically heals our units oh boy this is really not good the sardaukar are here i'm not sure who is actually employing them but in the dune universe the sardaukar are the best fighting force in the known universe they are the personal guards of the emperor himself and during the spice wars they were sent to help house harkonnen take out house atreides without any of the other houses knowing about it with careful manipulation of the landsrat we now have the ability to recruit the Landsrat Guards, which are better than the regular melee units that we start off with, but they're also extremely expensive. 50 influence just to recruit one unit, and they have influence upkeep, which is a big, big problem right now for me. But they are basically the best units, even better than the Wardens, which we don't even have access to because we don't have the technology yet. We actually should queue that up, call to arms, but I'm focusing mainly on my economic developments first as well as on my espionage because espionage really is extremely fruitful especially the missions that we got here for example we can give out gear sabotage that reduces enemy unit power in a region or we can get supplies in a region whenever we're passing from one point to another making sure our own units do not die out we were a good boy and we paid the imperial tax again but the next tax is going to be a thousand spice which is insanely high how am i even going to balance that out man also guys you can change the amount of spice that you get or the amount of solaris that you get from this ledger over here and right now i'm just gonna make it a little bit balanced because i need both uh, solaris and spice to pay for the next imperial tax looks like house harkonnen just brought a massive army by the border with us i strongly suspect that they're gonna try and attack us so i'm gonna be on the defensive in this province yep they're definitely bringing a lot more troops in fact they're bringing their entire army over here man what okay now they actually have more troops than me so i'm a little bit worried i probably should have built the uh, ballistic missiles rather than uh, plastine factories in this uh, province and here they come boys here they come let's try and build this missile battery here if we can maybe we can hold them off a little bit at least they're right next to me okay are they gonna attack or what what's happening here i'm a little bit confused they did not shoot yet but they're basically all around me and there's a raid detected also coming in from the south what is happening here are we having a massive rave party is that what's happening because nobody's shooting nobody just yet also, I use the peaceful annexation of sieges interaction that my faction has to annex this Aramur here without having to fight them or anything of the sorts. We also can build a processing plant in this province since we have the special resource, the rare elements, and this processing plant is going to give us flat solaris. We're going to be doing the exact same thing with the ASAN in the south once we have the authority to diplo annex them as well. Beats the schnitzel out of actually bringing my troops here in the south since these areas are very very hostile to human troops and there you go they attacked me okay what the snaps why did they wait with the attack this is so confusing right now oh boy i really need to win this oh boy i really need to win this and i'm also getting attacked by the uh, natives actually maybe if we focus a little bit our attack come on come on come on they're low on health but they're not dying what Okay, they all just instantly died. Like, literally everybody died. I think this might be a special Harkonnen um, ability. Now we still have to deal with the natives that are attacking us. So we didn't win just yet. I think it's time for me to recruit some more units. Um, really oh, I can get a Landsrat guard. Nice. One Landsrat guard and let's get heavy weapons. Couple of rangers as well. Yeah, we're going to be pulling out with these two units. I'm going to lose the rest of them. Sometimes you have to lose a few battles in order to win the war. The friend are gonna give me one of their agents if i give them some plastine yes for sure oh my god i just got a free agent from the fremen that is epic man we can get one more lance rat as well now and let's get a couple of troops also and i'm gonna be building the embassy so i get a few more influence points which means i'll be able to recruit even more lance rat guards seriously quite shocked with the fact that i actually managed to take back this siege i was sure that i would lose this but 
I'm happy to be wrong about it. And Harkonnen is building up their armies once more. They keep attacking me, but the Fremen are the big threat here. Look at them. They got like half the map already, man. I'm gonna build a couple more batteries here. If they're gonna attack me like that, I might as well get some support against them. And no more letting them get close like last time. That was a trick, actually. I never knew they do that. Looks like Harkonnen is now attacking the Fremen, finally. So it is time for me to attack Harkonnen at the same time. I claim this land in the name of a traitor. Ladies. Oh, these boys are mad now that we took their province. <laughs> come at me, Harkonnen. Come at me. I'm gonna do a nine head move and I'm gonna let these guys take over Alno before I attack it and take it for myself. So I've basically gotten really good relations with the Fremen. And that kind of makes sense because in the books, House Atreides and the Fremen worked together and Paul Atreides became the Muad'Dim, which is the leader of the Fremen. Kind of like a prophet that was implanted as an idea in the various local Fremen communities by the Bene Gesserit a long period before the arrival even of Paul Atreides. Or then again, it looks like the Fremen can take care of their own provinces, actually. So uh, I might just attack the uh, Harkonnen myself in that case. The moment we've been waiting for is here, guys. We are going to be gunning for the Dune Governorship. If we hold the Governorship for 60 days, we win a political victory of this game. Oh, you sneaky Fremen. They actually went undetected all the way to my main base. But you know what? I got my boys coming in with the shuttles because we have airports everywhere now there you go let's see you fight against the entire might of our army here we're gonna crush you you scummy boyos really not cool attacking me like that fremen i'm gonna take all your provinces now as reward and the harkonnen are attacking me at the same time but again my troops can handle this boyos we got the best troops in the world we're gonna liberate this village first before we head on down into the salvan part we have the airport in the province of eight sun so we're gonna have to take both as fast as possible well looks like the harkonnen didn't take the province they just wanted to pillage it and do a little bit of havoc Arrakis in the Dune universe is a symbol more than anything else for never-ending conflict and greed that leads humans to both achieve great things, but at what expense? Well, that's for you to decide. Check out the link in the description and get Dune Spice Wars for yourself so you can be the one that decides the future of Arrakis. Also, check out this awesome video up next and I really want to thank all my patrons, channel members and Twitch subscribers for the amazing support you guys have been offering. I really wouldn't be able to maintain this channel without all of your help.